Oh, hello there. I was just strolling through this garden here, and I thought to myself, you look like someone who is in need of a book. So I was, uh, I was reading through the Guardian the other day, and I, um, oh bloody, I forgot my phone. Hang on. So, so I, <clears throat> so I was reading through the Guardian the other day. I was, <laughs> I was reading through the Guardian the other day. I can pronounce things, and uh, I read this article that said Amazon blamed as iconic bookshops announced closure, and um, sorry phone and. It's really sad news. So the article says that two bookshops in England, one in London and one in Shropshire, are closing this year. Um, they cite a few different reasons, honestly, and the headline obviously says Amazon, but Amazon actually, if you read on, is cited as the main reason for the closure of these iconic independent bookstores. One of which was awarded the Bookseller of the Year prize in 2006 and the owner of this bookshop started the Wenlock Poetry Festival in Shropshire. So this is damning, horrible, dreadful, awful news. And as someone who would love to own his own independent bookshop in the future one day, I'm going to photoshop in my dreams coming crashing down behind me. Uh, I won't, I don't know how to do that. This is really dreadful bad news. So Amazon is killing the independent uh, bookshop industry, at least to a point. And I want to talk about why independent bookshops are important. And I think there are definitely going to be people who lament the death of the independent bookshop and then say there's a resurgence and those people don't go. So I'm going to convince them to go to my bookshop when I open it in 10, 20 years time. If I'm alive by then. If I'm not, rest in peace me. Uh, so here's a book. I bought this book at a, an independent bookshop. I bought this at Mr. B's Emporium of Reading Delights in Bath, England. I enjoy that bookshop very much. I enjoy a lot of independent bookshops very much. So here are a few things that I enjoy. Number one, conversation. I like conversation. When you go to an independent bookshop, you're guaranteed to have a better conversation than you are on Amazon. I have had very few decent conversations on Amazon. And there's something more dedicated. Uh, at independent bookshops, you get a lot more um, dedicated booksellers. You get people who really care about what they're selling and they're willing to have a decent conversation with you. If I bring you back to Mr. B's Emporium of Reading Delights in Bath, England, this bookshop actually has a special spa kind of thing that you can go to. I forget what it's called, I'll link it. Um, where you go and you pay it's like 50 quid, and, and or 70 quid, it's a bit, and it's a bit of money. And they give you a big stack of books, they, they, they sit you down, you, you get to sit down and have kind of like a therapy session with one of the booksellers who works there, and they will chat to you and demonstrate their friendliness, their expertise, their dedication to you, dedication to the books, and they will ask you what kind of books you like, what kind of genres you like, what books you've been reading recently, and they will bring you a stack of books that you take away with you at the end of this kind of book therapy session. It's such a lovely thing to do. And you don't get that on the internet. You don't even get it from the big chains like Waterstones who underpay their staff. Another reason is the lack of uniformity. If you go to an independent bookshop, you will get an individually crafted atmosphere. You get a place where people have spent years and spent money and spent time and spent thinking power on crafting a specific atmospheric experience, right? They want you to feel a certain way. I, I, I was in uh, upstate New York a few months ago and I went to a darling little independent bookshop in Rosendale, which is a little town in the Hudson Valley. and. I will flash up on screen the name of this bookshop right here because I can't remember what it is. And when I was there, I asked them, I said, uh, how's your business? This is a quiet town. Uh, how long have you guys been open? Various questions because I was curious. I'm always curious about independent bookshops. And it was a married couple, young married couple, don't know how old, uh, and they moved up from Brooklyn and they opened up this bookshop uh, just a few years ago and business has been doing really well. And the bookshop itself was such an absolute fucking delight to be in. It was, first of all, it was a small room, a small open room that kind of was, was deeper than it was wide. And 
mixed in on the shelves between the books were um, was ornamentation, uh, flowers, and uh, I think there was like ivy hanging down and stuff, and also uh, things that you could buy that were related to books and reading in some way, but weren't necessarily books. And and I don't know if you can hear that, but children, children are awful. Um, and they had uh, a, a, a tea and coffee machine on the side next to the till, register, and the books themselves were, I was so impressed. I walked around and I was thinking, shit, these are like the best of the award winners over here, the best of the translated books are over here, the best of the children's books are over here, they picked very colourful covers, and they'd really handcrafted a specific experience, and they weren't selling any guff. They weren't selling any shoddy literature. They weren't selling... I didn't see Paolo Coelho or Ayn Rand there. Uh, I didn't see The Da Vinci Code. They really were trying to sell decent literature. The best of fantasy, the best of sci-fi, the best of literary fiction, the best of translated fiction, the best of YA. They had what I consider to be really the best of the bunch. So I asked the, the husband of the two, um, and he was like, he was really proud when I said to him, like, you've meticulously handpicked such great books to sell. And he was like, well, yeah, I do spend a lot of time thinking about it. And then behind the register was also a picture uh, from Battlestar Galactica, which is my favorite TV show, alongside Buffy. So that was nice as well. So yeah, these were, these were my kind of people, and I bonded with them, and I wanted to buy a lot of books to support them, and also because they made it easier for me to buy uh, what I wanted, because everything there felt like it was tailored to me. And obviously it wasn't. But how many people are going to go into that shop and feel that feeling that the books there are tailored to them, specifically? I just love that feeling so much. And my third and final reason for... What am I talking about? Where am I? Cat just caught a mouse and Jess freaked out, so... Um, my third and final reason isn't going to sit well with the more conservative and less woke people out there. But I don't have any truck with those people anyway. If capitalism. If you've got Waterstones who aren't paying their booksellers a livable wage, and you've got Amazon, and the warehouse workers have been reported to be uh, pissing into bottles, like, fuck that, right? So fuck capitalism, obviously, forever. And the independent bookshop, just like any independent business, should win. Should win over any kind of um, trickle-down economic pyramid system with a giant CEO on the top. You've got Amazon, you've got Waterstones, and if that's all you've got, then you've just got miserable booksellers, or no booksellers at all, just algorithms selling you things. And it's just not going to go very well for us, is it? Like, what have we got? Where's the heart? Where's the soul? Where's the conversation? Where are the people? Where are the happy people doing happy things, living happy lives? Whereas if you've got someone who has put their life savings into a bookstore because they love books and because they love people and because they love talking about books with people, you're going to have a much better experience as a customer, as a book lover, as someone who might make a potential friend that day. Don't you want a bit of humanity? in your experience, as long as we're all making money and spending that money how we want, whatever's left over after we pay rent, hashtag also get rid of landlords, then we should be able to have a conversation during that time. We should be able to engage with people, not computers, not algorithms, and not miserable booksellers who aren't being paid a living wage. It's not a lot to ask, is it? And by going to an independent bookshop, that's what you get. Okay, so here I am in a very orange bookstore. This is Vanguard's Books in Copenhagen. I thought I'd give you an example of the beauty of independent bookstores. I'm very awkwardly filming myself in a quiet corner somewhere. This bookshop is full of old sci-fi book covers, but look at these fucking covers. Like, look at this, right? Look at that. Hurtled through time into an ancient kingdom, she became a warrior goddess like this. I look you just I just found a pile of them. These amazing old sci-fi covers from like the 50s and 60s and 70s. Like we don't have shit like this anymore. This is amazing. Like what even is it? 
I love, I love them. I've got more of them. Look at them, look at them all. It's amazing. This is why we need independent bookstores because you can come into a very orangey lit place like this in the middle of Copenhagen and you can find these amazing sci-fi covers, these utterly ridiculously painted sci-fi covers of books that don't exist anymore. You can't do that in fucking Waterstones. You can only do that in places like this. Amazing places like this with lights that hurt your eyes and smells all dusty and lovely and oh my god. Oh, love it. So I stumbled on this place. I was walking through Copenhagen. I saw it. I thought, oh, brilliant. This is topical. This is timing. So this is the English section, right? And then he here's where, where you get all these little sci-fi weird covers here in this little section here. And uh, and over there, through that room, right? You got you got like wing back chairs you can just sit in. And there's a, like a, there's like a filing cabinet. Look at this. They built that into the wall. This is weird and wonderful. And you just kind of sit here and feel happy. You can't sit on Amazon and feel happy. Oh my god, this is my this is my happy everything. This is my happy everything. Oh my god. Oh come find me. I'll be here.